They double wide the trailer, okay? <laughs> that was the joke. Would have gotten a way bigger laugh. Uh, poor Kevin Federline. Uh, one other big entertainment story for you here. Are you familiar with a band called The Police? Uh, five Grammy Awards that at the height of their success, like enormous success, they break up. But guess what? They're back. Yeah. Next month, the Popo are reuniting. That's <laughs> what we call them, a pet name. They're opening the Grammys. Uh, there have been rumors uh, swirling around for, uh, about a tour, uh, mainly because this is the 30th anniversary of Roxanne. Huge hit for that one. Uh, so the police are going to reunite at the Grammys next month with a performance, which will be amazing. Because right, you're familiar with their faces. You like them, right? That's the funny thing. And there's a certain comfort in a band like that. Uh, and there's a certain comfort in any kind of familiarity that you have. I mean, how are you with faces? Like, you know, you ever have those moments where you say, I know that person. I just, I can't wait. He, he could easily be that guy for much music, but I don't know. <laughs> you know, you can't, you know, imagine if that actually happened to you all the time and it was a serious condition, like not us just messing around. Like, imagine if you actually knew somebody for 25 years, but you look at them and you have no clue who they are. It actually happens for real. There's a condition called face blindness. So the hours Hillary Doyle hooked up with a guy who deals with this serious condition every day. Prosthobicnosia is a disorder in face recognition. It means that they can see a face and they know it's a face, but they don't know uh, to whom the face belongs. They don't know the person by looking at the face. They recognize features. Um, what they have trouble doing is putting the features together into a gestalt, in a kind of a whole. A person with prosopagnosia will be able to see this as a face, be able to recognize that it's made up of different objects, but he won't be able to identify this face as unique. I probably always had an awareness that I didn't recognize faces very well. I would say that I see it holistically. I'm told that subconsciously I break it down into geometric shapes. I basically have categorized people. There's certain numbers of faces in the world, and I automatically put somebody in a slot. There would be middle-aged, balding men, slim, attractive, dark-haired women. I grouped them together and automatically put them in one area. No one really knew about developmental prosopagnosia until about 20 years ago. These individuals uh, have difficulty recognizing faces from the time they're born. Well, there is my cousin's wife, who I've known for 25 years, and at a family function, I had no idea who she was. Can you recognize yourself in a mirror? Um, I scare myself sometimes, but I do recognize myself. As far as we know, there's nothing obviously wrong with their brains. There may be some subtle problems that they have, either in connecting the regions that are necessary for face recognition with each other, or in having those regions smaller. And growing up, I was best friends with two little twins that no one in the neighborhood could tell apart, except me. And I think it was because I knew them so well that every little nuance of their face was something I had memorized. Not only is it inherited, uh, but it's a dominant trait. It's carried on a dominant gene. My brother suffers from the same thing, and he's very friendly. We tend to say hello to everybody. Do you think that your sense of, of a good-looking woman is the same as your male friend's sense? Yes. You've done some research on this? <laughs> uh, well, I just know it's not different than, you know, most of the other men that I know. What makes a face easier to recognize for you? Um, if it was very distinctive, not, I mean, not even a clue who that would be. Penelope Cruz. Oh, really? See, if I saw Penelope Cruz, I would look for the nose. Okay. And because that's head on, you can't tell. I know she has a big nose. I'm sure she'd be pretty pissed you just said that. I know she would be. But... <laughs> Sorry, it's true. So if you saw your wife's face cut out of a magazine, you would know it was hers? Um, maybe. Maybe. Uh, perhaps if it was out of context, I might have a problem with it. If I was to leave and to come back with another woman, do you think you could distinguish my face from hers? Absolutely. Let's test it out. Bring it on. Uh, it's tougher than I thought. And I'm going to say Hillary is the one on my left. I would say that that is Hillary. Um, mostly I think it's Hillary because of the smile. And I think I remember the smile. You're wrong, Jeff. I can't believe it. <laughs> so boring. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> oh. Are you a normal guy? I would say I'm a normal guy. 
So this is just something you've learned to cope with? It's something I've pretty well learned to laugh off. For somebody who can't recognize faces, you've definitely chosen a very interesting profession. Uh, true in retrospect, yes. Okay, you're a photographer. I'm a, a photographer, photojournalist, have been for years, and I'm the photo editor of the National Post. You're really busting that guy up. Yeah, well, he can handle it. He can handle it. Yeah. Hillary Doyle. Um, it, it, there, I, I know it, you watch that piece and it's kind of, you're like, wow, that's, that's interesting. Uh, but there's more to it for a lot of people. If you, can you do a test of some, of some kind? Yeah, there's a website, www.faceblind.org. It's part of a research center collaborative between uh, Harvard and University College London. And there are two tests that you can do on the site. Uh, really interesting. One is for celebrities. One is for just strangers. Mm -hmm. And people with regular face recognition should score at least 85. I did it. I got 83. I have no idea who you are. <laughs> you get 83? Yeah, I know. Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> who do we, what do we do? Are Sorry. there different degrees of it? Like, I, mean, can, I, I would wonder if you can sort of, you know, there's a severe kind of face blindness and then a more moderate kind. Yeah. This guy would say that he is very moderate. Uh, and there are examples of people who can't recognize their own children. Um, I, I, it can be quite debilitating. But they haven't done a lot of research on it, particularly in North America. In Germany, they've researched it a little bit more, and it turns out that 2 to 2.5% 2 of the population in Germany has prosopagnosia, face blindness. That's high. It's pretty high. So right now, everybody should actually go onto this website because they're looking to find more people in North America who have this. And it is again and the, the website? West. The website is? Faceblind.org. Faceblind.org. Yes, thank you very much, Hillary Doyle. Thank you. Still to come on the hour uh, tonight, it's the list, the top five model meltdowns. I don't mean model planes, I mean Tyra Banks model. We'll get into that and we'll also get into this. All right, so up next we're going to